Now we need to add a camera in order to frame the scene. It is important to do it right now. Indeed, we have to modify the way the spaceship hits and rolls on the ground in relation to how the scene is framed. I added this camera. And the scene is framed as shown here. So, I changed all the simulation settings, like friction, damping, speed, etc., so that the pieces would move and stop in this way. In short, this is what I did. First, I slowed down the entire simulation to 0.7 and turned on split impulse. I also added a few more sub-steps per frame. Then, I changed the friction and bounciness values for the spaceship and the ground to get the movement we wanted. You could also do this on your own. In the settings for the camera, I set the focal length to 24 mm. Also, I changed the frame ratio to make it look more cinematic. In this case, 2560 by 1080 pixels. Now we need to do something that, at first glance, might seem strange. All of the simulation needs to be baked into keyframes. Basically, I'll turn the simulation into a standard keyframe animation. The reason is that from now on, we need to have a stable simulation that never changes and doesn't need to be computed. Consider, for example, opening this file, which is our simulation. And suppose we didn't bake it. If we move forward in time, the simulation doesn't change because it hasn't been calculated yet. To see the simulation, we do need to play the timeline from the beginning. And the simulation is now in memory, as shown by the orange bar. We can also see this in the properties for Rigid Body World. If we press the Bake button, we can also bake the simulation. The caching progress is shown below the timeline. Now that the cache is in memory, we can move to any frame in the timeline and see the animation. But the problem is that we could lose the baking if, for some reason, we delete the bake or if we have to handle other simulations at the same time. Basically, we need to find a way to store the simulation so that it doesn't get lost or has to be run with other simulations. So, we need to bake the animation to key frames, as we've already said. We can do this by selecting the object and choosing Bake to Keyframes from the Rigid Body menu. In this case, the problem is that we have two different kinds of animation. In the first part, the movement of the empty object drives the animation, as you may recall. In the second part, there is a simulation of a rigid body. If we choose an object and convert the simulation to keyframes, the second part of the animation would be turned into keyframes. But, precisely, this would only turn into keyframes for the second part, which is the rigid body simulation. We can try this with just one object. As you can see, the second part is converted in keyframes. But we have an issue between the two parts of the animation. The object moves in an unusual way. We can also turn an animation into a keyframe sequence in another way. This is the bake action under the animations menu. But this only works with keyframe based standard animation. It doesn't work for simulations, but only for the first part of our animation. So, we can't use it for all the animations. So, as you may have guessed, we need to use both methods to convert all the animation to keyframes. I used bake action in the first part. Bake to keyframes is what you do in the second part. 
So, let's pick all of the spaceship's objects and click Bake Action. But for the last frame, pick the last one before the impact, which is 98 in this case. Now, the first part of the animation has been baked into a sequence of keyframes. But we lost the dynamic simulation in the second part. This is because we don't have any more animation on the animated property of the objects. So, we have to fix this property's animation for each object. Well, now we have to turn in keyframes the second part of the animation. Select all of the objects and choose Bake to Keyframes. But before you do this, make sure that the simulation is baked. So, play the animation to store all of the simulation in memory. You can now safely bake to keyframes. Set the simulation's starting point, in this case 99, as the first frame. Now we have all of the keyframes for the animation. Also, we no longer have the strange problem we had before. Now, we have a simulation that is neither computed in real time nor played from memory. And this makes the performances much better. But you should only do this if you are sure your simulation is right. Also, make a copy of the original file so you don't lose the original simulation.